Promise Theory Part 2 The Rules of Delegation In the first part of this series, we looked at how agents rely on trusted information called promises to keep track of their expectations about how other agents intend to behave. In the second part, we'll draw explicit interaction diagrams or graphs and see how to use these to document the uncertainties and trace the flow of intent when agents work together. Recall the basic assumption that agents can only promise their own behaviours because they always have incomplete information about what other agents may do. That makes imposition ineffective and promises of key importance. For even two agents to cooperate, they both need to make promises. So suppose one agent, say a factory warehouse, promises another agent, say a mail order customer, delivery of a package. The first agent can only promise its own behavior, so it's implicitly responsible for delivery, in person, so to speak. The rule of agent autonomy now throws us a surprise. Because the first agent can't promise anything on behalf of the second, the promise to provide the package doesn't imply any intent or promise to accept it by the second agent. So for the package to be delivered, another promise has to be made by the recipient promise to accept the package. Giving and receiving are complementary in promise theory, and we label them by a plus and a minus sign, like electrical or magnetic polarities, plus for give and minus for accept. Average intent then flows from agents that promise plus promises to agents that promise minus promises. This makes a simple law about the transmission of intent. For an intended outcome to flow from one agent to another, we must always match a plus promise with a complementary minus promise. It's a simple accounting principle to help us avoid mistakes. The two-way binding enables what was intended to propagate from one agent to another, but it still doesn't guarantee that either will be able to keep its promises. Promises only ensure the possibility of intended outcomes. They don't bring about guarantees or determinism. Something interesting happens when we look at how more than two agents interact. The rule that agents can only promise their own behavior has strong implications about the promises we need to make to be able to trust intended outcomes delegated through intermediaries. Suppose our warehouse agent wants to use the service of a third party or intermediary, like a postman or a delivery agent, to help keep its promise to the customer. This changes the construction in a revealing way. The warehouse can't promise the customer that a third party will deliver the package as that would make a promise on behalf of the third party, violating the autonomy rule. So how can this work? The best the warehouse can do is to make a conditional promise, to inform about its intent, freely admitting the things it doesn't control. I promise you delivery of the package if the delivery agent keeps its promise to deliver. It's easy to see that a conditional promise is not a full promise because it has a dependency which may or may not be promised separately. To make it a real promise, the warehouse also has to promise that it will do its best either to act as the delivery agent itself or to acquire the promise from a third party that would fulfill a condition of delivery. To promise the intended delivery with three agents and without violating the autonomy rule, we need to do the following. First, the warehouse promises the customer the package, a plus promise, but only if the intermediary accepts it for delivery. The customer, or receiver, promises to accept those terms by making the complementary minus promise, thus confirming the possibility of a successful transfer, no matter who delivers. To quench the condition, or if, in that promise, the warehouse has to promise that it is going to accept a delivery service from a third party with a minus promise, both to the client and to the delivery provider. The delivery provider, in turn, promises its matching plus offer to pick up and deliver the package, binding to the minus promise from the warehouse. Finally, we repeat the conditional pattern for the delivery agent, this time promising its own outcome 
to hand over the package to the customer if the package is actually provided by the warehouse. In fact, it's already promised to accept this service from the warehouse, so from its perspective, it sees the warehouse as the third party in its relationship with the customer. This completes a plus-minus balanced network of autonomous promises. Communicating this necessary and sufficient information in a three-body interaction involves a minimum of eight promises, not just two. In other words, there are at least eight ways this outcome could fail by promises not being kept. The uncertainty of the outcome has increased by nearly the square of the number of agents. The conditional promises from warehouse to customer promise the order of intent or causal flow. The promises between warehouse and go-between and go-between and customer bind the two by mutual interest. A chemist might call this a directed covalent bond. But promise theory shows us a simple accounting principle. For every plus promise, there must be a minus promise or a condition to delegate. Why don't we just do something simple like this? The factory gives, the delivery agent takes, and then again to the customer. Well, if we make only these promises, the agents don't provide sufficient information. The problem here is that the warehouse makes no explicit promise to any customer, and the customer has no promise about where the now mysterious package comes from. There's a lot of missing information about what was really intended. The outcome's wishful thinking, and the agents kind of throw it over the wall to the next guy. What this example shows is that just adding a single new agent in a logistic chain adds a large overhead in what we need to communicate about intent to build trust. The cost of building trust around clear and specific intentions plays an essential role in scaling the costs of these interactions. In the next part, we'll look at how promises help us to understand the scaling of intent to much bigger collaborations.